Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to give you a mini review of the uh, Vaterra Glamis Uno. Uh, I picked this up about uh, about a month ago now uh, from Model Sport in the UK. Um, I fancied getting a, another RC. Um, up to now I've just been using uh, Traxxas Stampede, which has been a great, great laugh, um, really good as a basher, but I fancy something slightly different, so um, so I went for the, the Glamis Uno, uh, just come out, uh, it's different from the Stampede in that it's, uh, it's one-eighth scale, it's two-wheel drive, and it's uh, sort of sand rail style, um, so quite different from the Stampede, though still a basher rather than a racer. Um, so first thoughts were that um, comes in really good uh, packaging, you've probably seen this before, but uh, the Viterra brand packaging is, is really solid. Um, inside everything was done really well. Uh, the, the manual that comes with it is comprehensive, very colourful, um, great for anyone who's sort of new to RC and maybe looking to, to uh, pick up on some of those uh, skills and fill in some of those knowledge gaps. Um, the car itself, um, it's ready to run, um, came with everything, comes with um, a, a Spectrum DX2L uh, radio, uh, basic wall charger um, and a two cell LiPo, uh, I think it was a 3000 mAh LiPo, um, and obviously the car. Um, I pretty much put the lipo on uh, eBay straight away because I knew I was going to go um, go and put uh, my 3S lipos in this as it's 3S ready and I use 3S on the Stampede. Um, so already I've got rid of that lipo um, but I did try it out with my own 2S before uh, going to 3S to see what it was like and actually straight out of the box it was um, pretty fast. Um, could still pull some wheelies, very responsive. Um, uh, yeah, so even 2S uh, for, for sort of novice drivers would seem very fast, but um, in order to get it up and beyond the speed of my uh, Stampede, um, I wanted to go 3S. So um, first thoughts were, as I took it out of the box, um, is it feels really solid. Um, I've, I've stripped it down, by the way. This, this isn't how it, how it arrives in the box, obviously. Uh, it has its um, body shell, uh, which is multi-piece and uh, realistic driver figure um, but yeah out of the box it just feels really solid the um, chassis is amazing really it's it's like a extruded aluminium really solid I can't imagine that is ever gonna get damaged um, it just everything just feels really good the roll cage though it's made of plastic is is strong uh, everything is just just really well held together and put together the uh, receiver um, comes in a uh, waterproof uh, box here. As you can see, it's got some little sort of rubber, uh, rubberized windows that you can pull out and to get access uh, to both the receiver and also the uh, um, uh, steering servo is un underneath that as well. Um, but actually, it's it's very simple to look at. You can see right the way through it. Um, the speed controller is a dynamite fuse, um, let's say 3S ready. Uh, comes with a fan already installed, uh, which brings me to my first um, uh, sort of critical thing about this car is that um, the fan, uh, as soon as I switched on, the fan was running full time, even on 2S, which I was a bit surprised about. I thought it would only come on when it reached a certain temperature. but obviously not that intelligent, um, but probably about second or third time I took it out the fan just stopped working. Um, but to both uh, Model Sport and um, Horizon Hobby UK, uh, from, um, from, a, from a support point of view I mean, uh, they were really good. Um, a quick email to Model Sport and then uh, I think they contacted uh, Horizon Hobby and they sent me out a new fan which I've just fitted um, 
added a bit of tweaking on the connections, but it works fine now, so hopefully that one will last longer. Um, other further. things to note, um, good stuff, is, is the battery compartment. I really like it. Um, some people have sort of reservations about how it's going to work and whether it's going to... Um, you know, last, but so far I found it really good, and it's just really handy being able to access the the battery compartment without having to take the body shell off. Um, and I'll show you about the body shell later, but you wouldn't want to have to take that on and off every uh, every time you want to change your lipo, as it's um, it's a bit of a hassle, and there's lots of uh, lots of body clips just to to get rid of it. And the um, <coughs> the battery compartment comes with a uh, sort of almost like a thumb screw there, or you can use a, a coin or something to, to turn that to lock the uh, compartment. Uh, but it works really well, and so far, you know, despite having gone out bashing a number of times, it's uh, it's standing up and it's a relatively cheap part if you did need to replace it. And that just slides into the, um, the space, into the battery space, and then you just turn it, quarter of a turn, and it's locked. Um, now, one thing about the uh, battery compartment, if I can get it undone again, quite tight. One thing to note about the battery compartment is that, as I said, I wanted to um, to stick my uh, 3S LiPos straight in, uh, the ones that I use for the uh, Stampede. Now, I use these uh, Turnergy 5000 MAH um, three cell lipos and they are pretty chunky and I was disappointed to find that they won't actually fit in the, uh, the Glamis compartment, they're just slightly too wide um, and because of the, um, the compartment being completely surrounded by the um, aluminium chassis and the skid plate <coughs> not very easy to adjust the size of that at all so therefore I had to go and I mean it's literally probably two millimeters too wide but it was definitely too wide and I was only going to damage the lipo if I tried to get it in there so I um so I had to find myself another lipo that would fit in the tray um, now the compartment itself is actually really long so I was looking for something that was around 5000 mAh but would fit in the compartment was was narrow enough to fit in but could be pretty much any length I don't think they come much longer than that whole compartment length so I managed to find, find myself this uh, Beast DNA um, 5200MH35C uh, battery pack um, from where did I get this from? I got it off eBay um, and this fits very snugly but it does fit and um, I'll just show you that and the one thing that it's a little bit concerning um, is the uh, the battery connections because you basically connect the battery and then the the wires for the battery just sort of get pushed down the back of the battery tray which from a, a longevity point of view could be an issue later on but um, so far it, it's been okay so as I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a tight fit, this battery, but it does go in nicely. It really does fill the compartment fully, so I'm getting the most out of the capacity available to me. Fit that in, twist the lock, and we're in. We're done. A um, <clears throat> couple of other things I did notice um, as soon as I got it out of the box was there's a lot, quite a lot of slop in the steering, so the wheels were almost flap about. So when I took it out for the first time I just felt, especially on the road and on sort of firm um, driving conditions, that the front wheels would sort of flap about a bit in, in, in the bends. Um, as you can see there is a bit of movement there. It's just a little bit of slop. I mean you might be able to get rid of some of that by putting some shims in, some spaces, but it you know as a basher it's not really going to be a a huge problem and, and certainly I haven't found it to be a problem, it just looked a bit odd when I first saw it. So um, another thing I was slightly disappointed about was the uh, suspension. Um, now I don't know whether, well I'm pretty sure they must use these these same um, shock units on other cars because uh, it, it just seems like straight out of the box there was a lot of um, pretension, preload on these shocks. And certainly with my 
quite heavy 3S LiPo in, I've got, well, as you can see, a lot of preload on there just to stop it from drooping. And uh, the other thing is at the front, there's no preload on there, and I feel like it's actually quite, quite stiff, quite high riding. So there's very little adjustment here, and also very little adjustment of um, at the at either end of the shock. I think at the bottom you've got one, uh, yeah, I think one, maybe two slots at the bottom, but nothing at the top as far as I can tell. Um, it's just not possible to move um, the top link in or out. Um, but once again, for a basher, perhaps not not the, the worst thing in the world. Um, certainly not been a problem, and I can also experiment with the shock oil and the springs. Um, so there's a certain amount of um, adjustment I can I, I can make myself, but um, it's just something something to, to note. Um, one of the really good things uh, I like is just the amount of um, metal used, metal skid plate. There's um, uh, metal drive shafts and rubber boots. There's rubber boots on the um, shock absorbers. Sorry, let me get that. So there's uh, metal drive shafts, rubber boots in the shock absorbers, uh, metal hexes. Um, there's a little, a nice touch here on the um, on the gearbox. You can there's a little uh, rubber grommet there, which allows you access to the uh, slipper clutch for uh, easy adjustment. Um, on off switch anything else do you want one of the things some people said that it was this this car is very much like the HPI Baja 5B and to, in, in certain senses to look at it is I, I have no experience of the HPI but I certainly love the looks of it and this comes pretty close it's not quite up there and there's a few things that aren't quite so nice I think, I don't think the front is quite so nice um, and I'll show you when I put the body back on that actually the, this front panel here uh, which fits on the nose is actually secured using the um, using the light buckets which means that um, you have no choice without a bit of fettling uh, you have no choice um, about whether to use these light buckets and I think it doesn't really do much for the looks of it having those on there I'd rather take them off or, or have them wider set or something it just doesn't doesn't quite do it for me, um, but I will show you how to put it back together again, and um, I'll explain that there's there's um, a central point for a clip. There's two pairs of side clips. Um, that's for the main body. There's two for the front part. There's also two clips for the side uh, light pods. And there's another clip for driver figure, and what's the other bit? Oh yes, so there, and there's a nice aluminium uh, roof which goes on with four screws. So if you really want to take it apart, you've got to take a lot of clips off, lots of screws off. But to be honest, because the battery tray is underneath, the only reason why you'd need to do that is if you're doing some sort of uh, major maintenance, really. Um, oh yeah, one thing to note as well, uh, which I found uh, was a nice touch, was that the um, the rear wing is adjustable, so it comes on its lowest setting, and I put it on its on its um, middle setting there. Um, but you can so you can adjust it to three different settings just to change the angle of the rear wing, which I thought was a nice touch. Um, just sort of change the look slightly. Whether it affects the performance much, unlikely as a basher, but um, yeah, it's pretty good. And actually, just looking around at the um, the the rail the the sort of the chassis rail um, everything is held together by small clips so you could literally take it all apart by taking away these uh, uh, small body clips okay so I'm going to run through putting the body shell back on and then we'll move on to uh, the wheels and tyres because that's another area that I'd like to uh, show you.
Right, so finally got the body shell back on in its uh, so it's got one main part which is actually made of three parts which are screwed together but it comes off as one. You've got the front part and then you've got the four uh, light buckets and the aluminium uh, roof. It's a bit of a hassle, I needed some uh, long nose pliers just to get all the clips on because some of them are in tiny little places and my big fingers can't get in get into them. Now, so uh, the next subject is wheels and tyres. So the biggest disappointment I found with the Glamis is the rear wheels. In uh, 3S guys with you know all that power, these uh, bead locks which uh, which the car comes with just aren't up to the job. They just can't hold the tyres onto the wheels. And uh, you know I've tried tightening them up um, a number of times, but basically I've I've not yet got through a single lipo pack before one of these tyres has blown off. They're not being damaged, they just come out of the uh, the bead locks. You can see this one here has come right out and this one is, is partially out. Um, yeah, this was just from a, a 10 minute run the other day, so that is disappointing. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to resort to actually gluing these tyres into uh, the bead lock rim, which seems a bit counterintuitive given that they're bead locks, they shouldn't need that. Um, and if I wanted to reuse the bead lock wheels, it's going to be a lot harder once I've started using glue on them. Um, but hey ho, I've seen other people uh, with this issue as well, it's not just me. Um, but I guess that's just um, you know a slight design flaw. I mean, they're, they're quite nice looking wheels, but bead locks, I don't know, I don't really see the point. If they're not going to actually hold the tyre to the wheel, uh, then why bother? Um, but there we go. Um, the the foam inside, I can show you actually. Oh, this one's actually got a load of grass inside it. Um, but I can show you the foam is very, uh, it's quite thin, but also quite stiff. So the tyre itself feels quite solid. And if you have a look at the tread, it's it's quite soft rubber, and a lot of dimples. But to be honest, they're not very proud. There's a lot of them, and actually, I find the grip isn't that great. Um, it's okay on uh, sort of firm, hard-packed stuff, and okay on on dry grass. But try it on damp grass or uh, or on the road. They're not they're not that great. Um, just feel like gonna have to upgrade those at some point. I did for a laugh at actually just try my uh, my stampede wheels on the back of here because they got the same sized um, hex. I think it's I think it's 12 mil hex, and uh, it did look a little bit ridiculous. Um, they're not massively different uh, different in terms of uh, size, but width they are. So um, yeah, they just looked a bit silly. And actually, these uh, these Proline trenches that I've got on my stampede. Um, don't offer a lot of grip for a two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive uh, car, um, but they are great on the Stampede. So that was my main gripe. Um, now the front wheels are uh, sort of standard ribs. Um, they're fine, they do the job, but I noticed that even on these, uh, the front tyres are looking like they're trying to escape the beadlocks. Um, you know, you wouldn't expect that on a tyre that's not carrying the drive. So, um, yeah, definitely a bit of a design flaw there. Um, but nothing that I can't sort out. Um, so, in terms of performance, you know, I'm really pleased it um, the Glamis goes fast. In 3S, guys, it's uh, it's claimed 55 plus miles per hour, and I can well believe it. Um, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon I've been doing something like that, but um, it's it really performs well. Obviously, it's two-wheel drive. It is going to be a bit tail happy, especially on loose surfaces. You expect that, and it's it's great fun trying to sort of catch the steering. Uh, the servo is relatively slow, so um, I would probably recommend upgrading the servo um, to try and assist with sort of counteracting some of that um, oversteer tendency. Um, it just allow you to catch the back end before it goes too far. Um, jumping, it really jumps well. Um, the Stampede, because of its short wheelbase and 
high ride ride height it tends to be quite tricky to jump um, especially at really high speeds um, it's very sensitive to power changes whereas the um, the Glamis just flies it really flies through the air and it's just easy to land flat on its wheels um, so I'm looking forward to doing a bit more of that um, once I can sort out the tires it will allow me to, to sort of bash longer and therefore uh, try out some uh, some more terrain, some more jumps, that sort of thing. Um, I have got a couple of running videos, and I might put those on the end of this um, this mini review. Um, but I'm hoping to get some better footage once I've got these tyres sorted, and then I'll get some some sort of longer footage. Um, and so, so I might get a subsequent video up for you. So uh, make sure you uh, come back to the channel to uh, check out progress, and uh, if you subscribe and like. That would be really handy, thanks. Well that just about concludes um, the uh, mini review on the Patera Glamis Uno. Overall I'm really happy, it cost me, I think at the time, £309 from uh, Model Sport UK. I think it's gone up now to 319 but I think that's not bad um, considering what you get high quality 3S ready, uh, brushless. Oh, yeah, I didn't really talk about the motor. Actually, it's a it's a Fuse 3300 kV motor, and it is plenty powerful enough. I've seen other people say, or oh, you know, is it really big enough for a one eighth scale? But overall, this is quite a light car. It's not massively huge. It's sort of scale in terms of the type of car it is, um, but it's not as big as say a four by four one eighth scale buggy. Um, and this motor is plenty fast enough. I've got no problems with it whatsoever. It's a, as I say, a Dynamite Fuse 33 kilovolt. It goes with the Dynamite Fuse um, brushless speed controller. So uh, yeah, so that just about concludes things here. Um, as I say, I'll post some um, some running videos as soon as I have edited some of those together. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them uh, in the comments box below. Um, and I will definitely get back to you um, and uh, pass this video on to anyone else who could uh, use it. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye.